Ukraine's weirdest restaurants puts the U in the Ukraine. Putting on a miner's outfit to descend into a coffee mine. Where we dig deep for some buried beans. Now that is weird. Then we cruise to California to feast with a thousand fishes. People drive from miles around. And relish racks of ribs with some happy Hawaiians. Then we shimmy to Chicago. Hi, how are you? For a taste of old world Poland. Is that terrible? Horrible. Where we'll swing for sausages and sauerkraut. I can taste the Polish heritage right here in this bowl. And finally, we jet to Japan for some nostalgic nourishment. Test. And get schooled by some testy teachers. <laughs> in the beautiful Ukrainian city of Lviv at the Coffee Mine Cafe. They take specialty coffee to a whole new level. Just stick around and you'll see what I mean. Wake up and smell the coffee. Lviv is a crazy city where everyone drinks coffee and no one sleeps. There is a cold of coffee in Lviv. We start our day drinking a cup of coffee, and in the evening we have a cup of coffee, adding some milk. Ukrainians looking for hearty local food and a cup of joe totally dig this cafe. The coffee is very good. To ensure the freshest coffee possible, the Coffee Mine Cafe claims to mine the beans right under the restaurant. They are really working in the mine. You can go in the mine and have a tool to see the real coffee that is under the ground. So let's just get this straight. I'm putting on a miner's outfit to descend into a coffee mine. Now that is weird. Let me just give you some perspective here. We're in a mine, coffee mine that is, underneath an 18th century building, smack dab in the center of the city of Lviv. And right here, this is a cafe. Okay, so explain to me what you're doing here. We'll make the uh, alcohol coffee. Now you're talking my game. What so. does the sand have to do with it? It hit the coffee. I see. Boils. Ah, no, no, I see. It's very hot. That's hot yeah. sand. Are you going to tell me what kind of alcohol this is? Nah. No. It is okay. a secret. Now you're flambéing it down the chute. That is amazing. Look at the flames are going all the way up here. It's almost like a torch. Miner's magic. The last stage. Coffee. Well, clearly this is something you can easily make at home. They've obviously started with a dark roasted espresso. The alcohol is very sweet. Something like an amaretto. I'm getting a little bit of hazelnut in it. So it's more of a liqueur than a liquor. And that secret magic dust, definitely cinnamon. All in all, this would make me a very happy miner at the end of my day. Well, back at the old coffee mine. Look at all these old miners' helmets. <sighs> What is this? This is a uh, miner's kitchen. Wood burning oven here. This is the heart of the mine. Uh, look at it, incoming. Look at this. Look at all that coffee. So it is true. They really do mine the coffee down here. 30 percentage of people who comes in the restaurant really believes that coffee comes from the mine. The server tells me the coffee here comes from the mine. That's very cool. I don't believe in the coffee mine. I don't believe in Santa Claus. Look at this. These are the coffee deposits, and the miners ship the beans right out of the solid rock. Man, this is tough work. That's the result. I want you to think how hard I'm working the next time you're sitting back enjoying a cup of coffee. The coffee may be their bread and butter, so to speak, but it's not the only thing on the menu. You know you're in the Ukraine when you see a section that's headed goes well with alcohol. The meat they are cooking is really perfect. Oh, well, look at this. I've blown out birthday candles before, but never pork chops. That meat is so sweet, so juicy. You get the nice crust from the wood burning fire. A portion like this could feed an army of hungry miners. Chicken necks, skins, and hearts. Nice bit of crispy chicken skin. That is fantastic. Crispy, crunchy, dried chicken skin. I mean, what's not to love? So what'd you order? I have ordered the uh, real steak with mushroom sauce and vegetables. It's quite tasty. Nice piece of steak, some beautifully caramelized grilled vegetables. Look how perfectly that's cooked. The sauce is a creamy, rich mushroom sauce with some green peppercorns in it. And I can tell that the chef has sprinkled a little bit of ground coffee beans over the steak. Altogether, you're just getting so many layers of flavor. I can honestly say that is one of the most delicious morsels of steak 
that I've ever eaten. I feel like I'm in heaven, even though I'm underground. Here at street level, this whole room reminds you of an old Eastern European coffee shop. And you know why? Because it is. This conveyor belt brings the green beans up from the mine, which brings them straight over to the roaster. Whew, those beans are hot. About 10 minutes, we can do a coffee from this. Wouldn't be any pressure, that's for sure. And to cap off a visit to the coffee mine, a cup of their specialty cappuccino. Whoa, look at those flames. I love this. It's like having a coffee and a dessert all at the same time. Fantastic. That's like a coffee creme brulee. Oh, that's great. You know, the burnt sugar adds a bit of a caramel flavor to this cappuccino. And the coffee itself, so rich, so smooth, that is a perfect cup. Sure, a coffee mine may be as real as Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster, but it's one myth that definitely leaves a good taste in your mouth. This place is very weird. It's not like any other coffee shop in the world. Everything is strange here. And all this time, I thought coffee grew on trees. Silly me. The moment you walk through this door in Rosemead, California, you'll realize there's definitely something fishy going on at Bahuka. <laughs> So the first time you walked in here, what was your reaction? Wow, look at all those fish tanks. In fact, there are over a 1,000 fish in 110 tanks here at Bahuka. Buddy, it's lucky for you I forgot my tackle box. Bahuka's like a tiki junkyard experience. And we serve food. The food is totally tiki, too. Hawaiian Polynesian fusion with an American twist. There's a saying that it's too authentic, then it's not tiki. Oh, so it's really a Southern Californian interpretation of that Hawaiian Polynesian thing. Exactly. I'd love to have a sampler platter. I definitely want to try the Tahitian combination. Stuffed shrimp, and last but not least, the ribs and teriyaki chicken. I always get the ribs, the shrimp, and the clam chowder. It's the best. Where do all these fish come from? Mostly, we breed them here. Or people bring us fish. These are my two freshwater sharks. They got too big for my fish tank, so the bahuka was nice to uh, adopt them from me. You ever walk into a section and see someone in front of a tank making a fish face at the fish? All the time. Really? And they don't think we see that, but we see that. <laughs> crab pups. Little magical crab pups. Wow. <laughs> it's like a crab salad on the inside, breaded, super crispy on the outside while it's super luscious on the inside. It doesn't get any better than that, does it? The Tahitian combination. Look at that. You got this shaved ham sandwich, with the beautiful pineapple slice here, fries, the famous ribs. Oh, man. That's everything you love about a Hawaiian luau, all packed into one sandwich. Sure, the food is great, but the restaurant's star attraction is one very big fish. This is Rufus. He's 36 years old. Looks pretty good for his age. He's amazing. He's only supposed to live 10 years. What's his secret to longevity? Carrots and love. Carrots, Carrots and love. love. Yeah. That's all? That's all it takes? There you go, Rufus. Aww. Have you ever fed it the carrots? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he has a YouTube channel, which I thought was really He's cool. He's got his own YouTube channel. Did you know that Rufus was a movie star? You know what? I don't think I've seen his picture. They did some filming on one of Johnny Depp's movies here. Matter of fact, this area here is what you'll see in the movie. Of course, we didn't get in the movie, but Rufus <laughs> did. Dude, who's your agent? But Rufus isn't the only reason people come to Bahuka. Our specialty are the spare ribs. These are famous Bahuka barbecue tiki ribs. People drive for miles around just to have these ribs. Oh, the ribs are awesome. There's nothing says bula bula like a big stack of ribs and you're gnawing on the bones. And that meat is so tender, and the sauce, it's sweet and tangy at the same time. And it's just a perfect combination. You're not going to tell me what's in the marinade, are you? No. I hear that's a secret recipe for this. Do you know what it is? If I did, it wouldn't be a secret. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Got to get the recipe for that secret rib marinade. I'm going to ask the person who's been here the longest, who's seen the most. And I think you know who I'm talking about. Come on, Rufus, give it up. What's in that marinade? Damn. <laughs> if all the fish aren't enough to hold your attention, there's also a house band and more tiki artifacts than you can shake a totem at. So you guys have really been coming here for 31 years? Absolutely. And has the place changed at all? I think they've got more parrots now. We just keep on adding as we go along. 
You don't see it all in one trip. Well, no, that's the secret of bringing it back. That's right. <laughs> it seems to work. Ah, uh, stuffed shrimp and yams, or as I like to call them, Polynesian potatoes. This may look like a drumstick, but man, there's so much more going on. I mean, you've got crab meat inside, you've got mozzarella cheese, you've got the lovely shrimp, the crusty breaded exterior. I mean, after one bite, I am hooked. My favorite one is the chicken and ribs. Look at this, half a chicken. The chicken's so moist, it's so tender. You get the sweetness of the teriyaki sauce. That'll put the hula in the hoop. So what do you call this kind of dancing? Hula a go-go. Hula a go-go. Think you can teach me? Where else can you enjoy authentic fake Polynesian food, drink fabulous flaming cocktails, and hang out with a thousand fish? It's totally unique. You can't find anything like it. Bahuka is tiki heaven. You may come to Bahuka for dinner, but you leave feeling like you just had a Polynesian vacation. All right, big guy, my last offer. You don't have to travel halfway around the world to Warsaw to get an authentic taste of Poland. Just jump on Chicago's L train and head for Sour's restaurant. And with one pull of the rope, you'll be transported there. You don't have to go Poland to see a real Polish restaurant. Walking into Shawis restaurant, you're instantly taken back to a time of Polish Highlander culture. Every corner is filled with traditional and authentic items. You can come here and enjoy the atmosphere, the food, the music. Wow, this is amazing. Taking old traditions to new extremes, they serve up rich Polish comfort food in an artfully recreated old world village. Wow, look at this. I mean, when was the last time you dined in an authentic Polish sleigh? So what are your most popular dishes here? I agree that sheep cheese. Sheep cheese. Sauerkraut soup, and Highlander special. Sounds yes, great. Yes, it's very good. We have a traditional Polish food, special from the South Poland. I am half Polish, so I always have Polish food. It's just so homey to me. I love this. I mean, in most traditional restaurants, you get a small basket with a couple of rolls in it. Here, you have a huge portion of this potato bread and then giant scoops of cheese and lard. Wow. You know, normally I wouldn't even consider slathering lard onto a piece of bread. Oh, yeah. Well, there's no question that fat is flavored. We have very good fresh food. The menu is something from the old uh, teapot. Like my grandma and my mom, they give me the recipe. Oh, beautiful presentation. Thank you. So you've got your fermented cabbage, pieces of potatoes, huge set of ribs here. You know, you get the tanginess of the fermented cabbage and this very salty broth and this beef here. I mean, this is a really interesting combination. I can definitely see, feel, and taste the Polish heritage right here in this bowl. Just a few blocks south of here is Chicago's notorious south side. But you walk through this door and you immediately feel like you're in old world Poland. Shawa's restaurant is a special place. Everything really brings you to Poland. And then everywhere you look in this building, there are incredible artifacts. Tell me about this wheel. It's amazing. It's beautiful, yes. We make it in Poland. Brought it over here piece yes. by piece? Yes. Polish ingenuity and finest. And what about these costumes up here? The costume is mine and my kids for a special occasion. When I come up to the front door, I feel like I'm walking into a house. Most people who come here first time, they're totally shocked. It's weird about the place. I mean, just look at what everybody's wearing. I mean, come on. Everything is just like it was 100 or 200 years ago. For the sausage. Wow. Well, this is a very nouvelle presentation of a traditional Polish dish. And this sausage, it's just bursting at the seams. It is jam-packed. What do you think about the food? The only thing that isn't weird about this place, it was phenomenal. Delicious. I love it. it smells so smoky so moist. When it comes to making sausage, these Poles really know what they're doing. Incredible. Listen to these voices. These aren't amplified at all. These women are just singing. I mean, the whole experience is really like just being invited to a Polish wedding. They just phenomenal. They fun to watch, fun to be around. When 
people come here, we try to invite them to dance, and their first answer to us is like, we don't know how to dance. Hold me tight. Hold you tight. OK, I can do that. I'll just tell them, trust my steps. One, two, three. One, two, three. Is that terrible? Horrible. <laughs> Are you sober? Yeah, that's why. Oh. <laughs> Should I do a shot? Nazdrowie. Nazdrowie. At the beginning of the night, I didn't feel very Polish, but combine the old world decor, music, dance, traditional Polish dishes, and the warm embrace of a small village, and one winds up feeling right at home. Oh, and did I mention the vodka? Class is always in session at the elementary school tavern, a traditional Japanese pub right here in the heart of Tokyo, where their spin on school lunches gets an A plus for creativity. So I'm back in elementary school, but everything's in Japanese. I wanted to create a restaurant that looked just like the elementary school I attended 50 years ago. And the elementary tavern is in a class of its own, one that caters to your inner child. My friend and I came here to be reminded of when we went to elementary school. What did you think when you walked in the door here? I thought, oh shoot, I'm back at school. The Japanese school theme even extends to their menu. It's like stepping into a time machine. The cafeteria is now open. All the food in this restaurant is inspired by school lunches. My favorite dish is the salad in the cricket cage. Usually a box for putting the insects, but instead they're putting salad and uh, deep fried stuff. Well, what do we have here? Looks like some kind of deep fried croquette of some sort and a dipping sauce. Remember that ham and cheese sandwich you used to have after school? Well, this is it, but deep fried. This restaurant is weird. It brings back memories when I was in school. What are you talking about? All the decorations are real and have been donated by friends and family. Some items are 40 or 50 years old. Look at this. Classic blackboard, vintage kids' school bags, crossing guard flag. Every schoolroom is based on a different subject matter. This is the geography room, the nurse's room, <laughs> the library in here art class. I'm looking here, it's the astrology room. And look at this black lit star map on the ceiling. There's the cafeteria. Look at this bowl. I mean, this is just no frills, classic cafeteria. And this pasta is really more of a Japanese noodle, which is really interesting because even though it's very distinctively Japanese, together with this bolognese sauce, it just brings back the taste of that cafeteria spaghetti I remember from when I was a kid. It's really delicious. Yeah, delicious. <laughs> Caesar salad, and this totally brings me back to being called down to the nurse's office for a vaccination. You've got your Caesar salad dressing, and instead of there being a raw yolk in the dressing, they've got a very, very lightly poached yolk sitting right on top of the salad here. Oh yeah, you get that rich, creamy dressing, the nice saltiness of the bacon bits, crunch of the crisp lettuce. Man, this really works. I like the salad with the dressing injection. It's a lot of fun. Onigiri, the classic snack that every Japanese kid gets sent to school with in their lunchbox. This is rice wrapped in a nori sheet, and there's several variations. There's sour plum, sometimes raw egg, and this one appears to have salmon on it. No chopsticks involved, you just pick it up, and hmm, that's the classic rib stick and snack that'll get you all the energy you need to do cartwheels at recess. Did you do your homework before you came here for dinner? I knew it. I've been in Japan for about 10 months now, and this is the weirdest restaurant I've been to. The weirdest thing about this restaurant is that the servers act like teachers. Test. A test? Is it like a school test? Yes. Every day, this restaurant hands out a different test. If you get a perfect score, you win a prize. Cool. Good luck. They gave a music test for us because we are in the music room right now. The test is very hard if you can't speak Japanese. <laughs> I got a perfect score. I'm sure they won't mind if I just cheat a little. So how's this food compared to what you remember when you were a kid? Oh, it's exactly the same. Mom, I got the. This is age pan. It's a little special treat that the cafeteria serve up to the kids once a month as a dessert. It's deep fried bread sprinkled with a little bit of ground soy dust. It's basically a Japanese donut. 
and it's really good. All that's missing is a tall glass of milk. But a tall ice cream parfait is even better. The perfect score parfait, I love this. You get a choice of honey and strawberry jam. You've got your layers of mandarin orange, pear, maraschino cherry, fresh strawberry, your ice cream, of course, the cookies, some hockey sticks. Mm, the perfect score parfait definitely lives up to its name. You know, if the food was this good in my elementary school, I never would have had to pack a bag lunch. And if they served beer, I would have become a professional student. People feel like kids here, and they don't want to go home. I graduated? No, you're a cheater. Moral of the story, cheaters never prosper. <laughs>